So thanks a lot, Radhika, for the introduction. Um, so as we know, programmable data planes enable a programmer to define the forwarding behavior of a network switch using a high-level language such as before. In practice, though, such a program often fails to compile. This happens because the programmer needs to map an often ambitious high-level P4 program to the particularly tight resource budget of a typical switch. Picking the obvious question, who should fix this, the programmer or the compiler? On one hand, the programmer knows the intended functionality, but he ignores the hardware specifics. As a result, the programmer tries to make the program compile by blindly rewriting semantically equivalent programs and resubmitting them to the compiler. On the other hand, the compiler knows all hardware constraints, but it ignores the context. As a result, the, the compiler tries to make the program compile by trying out different allocations while conservatively accounting for all possible inputs, including unrealistic or infrequent ones. In essence, there is a gap between what the programmer intended to achieve with the program and what the compiler considers when compiling it. With this in mind, we built P2Go, a system that bridges this gap by generating programs whose compilation is easier to achieve because their scope is limited to the expected case. Instead of putting the burden on the programmer, P2Go generates such programs automatically, guided by the program's profile. The program's profile describes the program's functionality in practice and can be obtained by observing the behavior of the initial program when presented with realistic traffic. Once P2Go generates a new program, say P4 Prime, it probes the compiler to verify that it uses less resources, thus the modification made in the initial program are useful. Once the gain is guaranteed, P2Go asks the programmer to verify that P4 Prime also satisfies the initial uh, functionality of the, of the initial program. P2Go is a system for P4 profile-guided optimizations, which we designed and built together with Patrick, Alex, and Laurent at ETH Zurich. This is the outline of my talk. I'll first explain what profiling is and how we can profile a program. Then I will talk about the optimizations that P2Go applies to programs and describe our initial results. Finally, I will discuss future directions. So what is the program's profile? A program's profile is a description of the program's behavior during runtime. In the context of P4, the program's profile contains the control paths that packets of a realistic traffic trace take in the program's control logic. By realistic, I mean that the traffic trace resembles the traffic that the program is expected to run on. For example, the profile of a given program might contain information such as that a certain set of actions are mutually exclusive, that is, that they're never executed by the same packet, or that another segment is very frequently used. P2Go obtains the, program of, the profile offline. To do so, P2Go first instruments the P4 program. The instrumented program appends the path of each packet through the control logic as a header after its initial header. Next, P2Go runs the instrumented program on the traffic trace that the programmer has provided and collects the output to construct the profile. Once the profiling is done, its insights can guide a broader spectrum of optimizations for compiling the program. P2Go uses three profile-guided optimizations in order to reduce the number of pipeline stages the program uses. Indeed, the number of pipeline stages is one of the most scarce resource that often prevents programs from compiling. Concretely, P2Go optimizations aim at increasing the pipeline concurrency, reducing resource waste, and improving the hardware-software split. I'll now walk you through each optimization using a motivating example. Consider the P4 program shown in the slide with four tables, namely scene forward and magic tables one to three. The former is only applied on scene packets, while the latter three on packets whose payload is above 10 bytes. The program needs five stages to run in hardware. If you're wondering why four tables need five stages, then consider two things. First, there is a dependency between the scene forward and the magic tables, meaning that the magic tables use results that could have been changed by the scene forwarding. So the execution of the scene forward table needs to precede the execution of the magic table in the pipeline. Second, magic2 uses more memory than what is available in single state. Again, the two factors leads the compiler to map the before program to five stages. Now, I will explain how P2Go leverages the profile of the example program to reduce the number of pipeline stages it uses by applying three optimizations. In the first one, P2Go aims at increasing the pipeline concurrency by removing potentially fake dependencies. 
To do so, P2Go first extracts the program dependencies from the compiler. Obviously, these dependencies are found by static analysis on the program. Next, P2Go compares these dependencies with execution paths taken by packets during profiling. Observe that the dependency between the scene forward and the magic table one does not manifest during profiling, as no single packet ever matched both. In fact, the compiler does not need to keep them in two separate physical stages. Leveraging this, P2Go automatically generates a new program with a dependency resolved, meaning that there is now a clear indication that the two tables are mutually exclusive. In fact, the compiler is now allowed to move the magic table in the same states as the scene forwarding table. Uh, by probing the compiler, P2Go verifies that the modification in the program results in a reduction of the required physical stages. Once the gain is guaranteed, P2Go asks the programmer whether the profile-based observation that guided the generation of the new program is general and can be leveraged by decreasing for, to decrease the number of pipeline um, stages used. The programmer considers the observation and realizes that it is general. Observe that it is, there is no scene packet with payload, so P2Go's change in the P4 code does not modify the program semantics in practice. After removing the potential effect dependencies, P2Go searches for opportunities to sort out the pipeline length by slightly reducing the memory of any table. This opportunity might arise in practice due to the lack of knowledge of the underlying architecture. For example, the programmer might ignore the amount of available memory per state. To do so, P2Go first finds the tables that were least used by packets during profiling. Then, P2Go generates code with reduced memory on those tables and probes the compiler to see if the reduction, of the, if the reduction has a collateral effect on the number of stages used. If there is such an opportunity, P2Go searches for the minimum memory reduction that could shorten the pipeline. In our case, P2Go finds that it can save a state by reducing the memory allocation by MAGIC2 only by 2%. P2Go communicates this optimization opportunity to the programmer who happily accepts it, as his initial choice of memory allocation was only a rough estimate. The last optimization that P2Go applies is migrating code to software. To do so, P2Go first um, finds the least used tables in the profile and verifies that they are self-contained. That is, no other table depends on their computation and vice versa. In this case, the magic table tree is a suitable candidate. Next, P2Go generates a program without the magic table that instructs the corresponding packets to be forwarded to the controller. P2Go suggests the edit to the programmer with the profile-based observation that guided it, meaning the fact that magic three table was very seldom used and also self-contained. In this case, the programmer refuses and insists that the table magic 3 should stay in the data plane. The profile guided optimization in this case was not helpful, but let me explain why this can happen and why this is still okay. The traffic trace used during profiling might happen to not contain traffic on which the table is applied. In our example, that was magic 3. In other words, the trace might not be representative with respect to the observation. Yet, the programmer can easily spot this mismatch when he reviews the observation that guided the optimization that P2Go use, and then reject the suggested optimization like he did in our example. While intuitive, these observations are enough for P2Go to reduce the uh, resources used by realistic programs, as we see in our preliminary evaluation. In particular, we run our P2Go prototype along the Tofino compiler on three realistic examples written in Tofino P414. We generated the traffic on our own and allowed P2Go to use one optimization in its example. As we see in the last two columns, P2Go manages to decrease the number of stages that the programs used. We believe that P2Go is the first step towards a new direction for compiling P4 programs. P2Go also raises many interesting questions. First, how practical is it to get a representative traffic trace for a profiling? The leverage of P2Go is that the trace needs to be representative only with respect to the observation used to optimize the program. An alternative approach would be to do online profiling and dynamic compilation. The question that remains, though, is does online profiling worth the cost of monitoring, recompiling, and loading new programs dynamically? And if we cannot have a representative traffic trace, then the generated programs will not always be semantically equivalent in practice. 
be to go avoid such negative, effect, negative effects by asking the programmer to approve the change. Obviously, this is an improvement, as a programmer does not need to consider two minutes left. The programmer, thanks. The programmer doesn't need to consider all possible changes in advance, manually change the program, and manually check again whether those would reduce the, prof the compiler's location. But the obvious question is, could we optimize before programs without the human in the loop? If we do not want the programmer in the loop, and we also cannot have a perfect traffic trace, then the behavior of our optimized program might diverge from the original under unusual traffic or even adversarial traffic. So the obvious question is, could we detect that there was such a divergence? And if so, could we even provide a fallback? Actually, Nokia's talk from um, yesterday that she talked about online safety assurance nicely correlates here. Finally, P2Go only targets stages. Well, this is a good first step. We need to think how to go around other resources, such as memory, PHVs, and so on. Optimizing across multiple dimensions increases the optimization space. So how can we best navigate this space? And with this, I concluded my talk about P2Go, a system that bridges the gap between the programmer and the compiler. To do so, P2Go leverages the program's profile to optimize it while not breaking the program semantics under the expected case. P2Go only requires the programmer to approve the optimized program given the observation used together with the achieved gain. And finally, I want to mention that I'm in the academic job market, so please reach out if your university is hiring. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, thank you, Maria. That was a great talk. Uh, so we can uh, start taking questions now. So if you have a question on the Zoom session, please raise your hand. Um, and you can also post your questions for Slack. All right, so I, th I think the talk was extremely good. Okay, uh, Orjit Panda, we, uh, we have a question from him. Let me unmute uh, you. Oops. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, Panda, can you speak up? Uh, yeah, wait, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, cool, so that was a great talk. Um, so one issue that, often comes up when applying Pogo to traditional uh, things. So like, you know, Windows for a while used to ship with Pogo enabled and one of the biggest problems became debugging. So in, in this case, like uh, given that the profile drives the optimization, how does this affect debuggability and uh, especially like a resource deb uh, debugging where you suddenly see that a new a change in traffic pattern is causing bad performance. How, how, how do you expect programs to debug the output of P2Go? Mm, can you a little bit uh, clarify your question? I'm not sure, like debugging with respect to what? The use of resources. So it might be that the new uh, use of resources is up optimal with respect to the beginning, or is this what you're aiming at? Can you hear well, me? Well, so yeah, sorry, I was I muted myself and then couldn't unmute myself, so it was not. <laughs> um, so there's two parts to this. So the first is with terms of resources. The second is, um, in you're changing the layout, and in some sense, while your transformations that you're uh, so in this case, okay, so. What the set of uh, optimizations you're doing now are just changing resource layouts, which might be suboptimal for a certain workload. As you go into more and more profile-guided optimization, at some point you start doing uh, transformations on the actual on the actual semantics of the code. I mean, you hope to preserve uh, semantics, but you're changing that. And in both cases, suddenly, you know, the problem is that with general optimizations, you have to reason you try to de-optimize or try to reason about the optimized version. Uh, with Pogo, like as it's driven by user, uh, by profiles, the optimizations are quite unexpected at times. So uh, mm -hmm. like, do you think this problem is easier in the P4 context than like, because it's Pogo has been around for order 10 or 15 years now in almost every compiler. And we haven't seen a lot of uses for it. Okay. So, um, for, I'll first answer with respect to before and then and then we can talk about the use in general. So, and thanks a lot for the question. It's like, now I understand and I think it's great. So, um, first, I like to think of P2Go as Grammarly. So, Grammarly will not always be right, but sometimes it will be right and it will help you and it will save you time. 
right? But sometimes it will try to change your semantics of, of what you're writing. And in this case, you will reject. So the programmer has always the last word of whether um, he or she wants to actually proceed and do the optimization asked, right? So what, I'm, what we're aiming at with profile guided optimization in this context is that the programmers should not know everything about the hardware, but they should have somebody telling them what might help their allocation. But of course, it cannot do everything. With respect to whether pro, um, program, um, profile guided optimizations used, I, I think they're actually used and you can find like both Facebook and Google have, have tools like Propeller and Bold that are actually using profile guided optimizations. So I don't know, I think I'm, I'm excited about this direction. Can I ask a, f oh, there's, uh, there's actually a question, so I will Yeah, so stop. maybe Lloyd can, Lloyd can ask yeah. a question. Yeah. Okay, thanks for your question, Panda. Uh, okay, Lloyd, uh, I'll ask you to unmute yourself and you can. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Right, so it's, thanks for the talk, really interesting. So it seemed like the first optimization you made that saved you a stage was you leveraging this insight that SYN packets have a small payload. And that seems to be kind of independent from the actual traffic trace. Do you and, and so you could imagine that if you had some like default traces that maybe sent a bunch of synth packets and some other packets that you could get these optimizations without having a real traffic pattern. So do you think there are there's maybe an opportunity to have some default traces that give you some optimizations? Yes, definitely. In fact, how um, how um, useful the profile guided optimization will be. Uh, depends on the trace, but does, the, the trace doesn't have to be perfect. So it will be useful if the trace is representative with respect to observe the observation that P2Go uses. So in this case, the observation that P2Go uses applies to any possible trace. So yes, totally. And this is the, the beauty of it, that you don't need a perfect trace to start, right? But the better trace you offer, the more optimizations you can actually achieve with it. Yeah, thanks, awesome. Thanks. Uh, so I think we can take one last question. So there's a question on Slack. Aditi, could you please relay that question? And then we can um, next one. Sure. Um, so uh, Hardik Soni asked a question. Uh, he says, how about punting packets with complex and or rarely seen headers to the controllers? There could be two reasons to do it. One, uh, removing such headers could greatly simplify PHP allocation and could, will help to fit the program. Two, some headers are part of purely controlled protocols. Therefore, with reasonable latency in processing them could be tolerated. Yeah, that's also a very good point. I totally agree with that. So we are not, um, of course, when we're moving things to the controller, right? We need to pay the price of actually the extra delay that their processing will cause. And it's true that in P2Go, we only take into consideration the percentage of packets that would actually end up being the controller. In a, in a, in a, future, um, in a future project, we could take more fine-grained uh, information into consideration and then take a more informed decision on what we want to move in the controller. But the thing is more of trying to make the device act a bit like a cast of the instructions in that you move there, whatever is very frequently used or whatever would cost a lot of delay in the actual traffic if it's, it is in the software. So more of trying to rethink how the split should be done rather than making it arbitrary, right? That's, but, but that was a valid point, yes. Uh, thank you, Maria. That was a great talk.